Hi, I'm Amy, and I'm a botanist. I'm researching an invasive plant called pumpum weed in a nature reserve in South Africa, and I need to make a map of my study area with random data collection points on it and other important information. A fellow scientist has shared some data with me, but the problem is I don't have good map making skills or a decent GIS software on my computer. Most of the mapping software I've seen is super expensive, and worst of all, I'm under time pressure. Enter QGIS. QGIS is a powerful, free, and open source mapping software for everyone. Not only is it easy to download and use, but it has a massive network of developers and users that constantly update the software. There are hundreds of online resources, courses, and tutorials to help you get started. So let me show you a short video on how I made a simple map in QGIS. This is the QGIS desktop application. I've started with an empty project layout, and first of all, I'm going to create a geo package into which I'll save all my data. You go here into the browser tag, you can see geo package. These are some of the other geo packages I've made before. And you say create database. In create database, I'm going to browse to um, the data file, which is Reedflay data, which is the nature reserve that I am working on, which is on my desktop. And this is where I want to save my geo package. Okay, save that, which is great. All right, so. QGIS requires you to make a dummy layer in order to create the geo package, this project. So I'm just going to call it dummy layer. And I'm going to add that. And I'm going to press OK. Great. So you can see that I have my geo package called readflay here. And when I open the geo package, there is a dummy layer that had no geometry called readflay. All right, so now I'm going to start inputting some of the data that my re that a researcher shared with me. There are multiple ways to do this, but I find the easiest is just to open the file that the data is all in, and you can drag across the data you need. Um, the person who shared the data with me mainly used shapefiles, and this was from a different program. So I'm going to first of all drag and drop the nature reserve and you can see outside of the nature reserve has come up in my map viewer and what i want to do is let me just remove this layer so what i'm going to do is copy this into our geo package so that it's saved in the same place that our entire project is saved in so copy it into there and you can see it's copying if it import was successful. All right, and then we can copy it straight back out so that we can work on that. All right, so then we are going to want to delete the original one. Remove the layer. And if you hover over that layer, you can now see that it is saved in the correct file that you will be saving all your data into. All right, so this is the Reedflay Nature Reserve, but I would like a few more layers just to show what I'm going to do with this project. So what's important for this project is, first of all, to generate some random points at which I can collect data in the field, and also to have a general map um, to publish with a study to show the study area, what's in the area, and what's going on. So. To generate the points, we decided that we would use the areas between the roads in order to make a polygon, and that would then be used as the area to generate the random points. So let's go over here and bring in the roads. You can see the roads has generated there. And we're also going to bring in this, which are some digitized polygons based on the roads, which is where we're going to generate the random points. And then I thought it would be nice to bring in the rivers or the waterways just to show 
where they are because pom pom weed is quite um, water dependent and disturbance dependent so it would be good to have a look at so let's grab in the water area because um reflay has a large dam and let's grab the rivers fantastic so those are the layers we're going to work with for now it's always a good idea to save your work as you go for now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy all these layers into the geo package and copy them out again so that i know i'm working on them in the correct folder so if I grab all these layers and I'm going to pop them into my geo package, read flay. The imports were successful. We're going to check that all our layers are there. Perfect. Um, we're going to remove those layers for now. And we can copy them all back in. This is just keeping all our layers together in one neat Joe package so that we can work correctly. But for now, let's just save this project and we're going to save it into the geo package so that everything is together. So in order to do that, you want to go to here and save to geo package. We have already connected to the Reedflay geo package, so you just say yes and we're going to call it read lay map press ok all right now that we can see that everything is in our correct geo package let's start work on creating these points so for now i'm just going to switch off the rest of the layers so now we want to create some random points within the areas between the roads um, i decided that i needed five random points um, within each area and these are the areas in the park that I can access. So what we do is we go to the vector tools, research tools and random points inside polygons. We pick the layer we want which is the road polygons and I want five points per polygon and you run the tool and you can see that there are now five points in each of the road polygons, which is exactly what I want. However, here you can see with this little symbol that this is a temporary layer and we want this to be obviously a permanent layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly rename this. We'll call them data points. All right, and we're going to copy that straight into our geo package. We'll delete this layer. And we will bring back the data collection points so that we can work on them and we can see it is now a permanent layer and that it's in our correct file. So these are now the points that I can collect data at. I'm going to turn off the road polygon because we no longer need that. I'm going to turn on some of the other layers and show you how to change the symbology just so that the map makes slightly more sense. So I'm going to turn on the layers that I would like and start off by changing the outside of the Reserve. So if we click on the simple full. Now um, I've opened the side here, but you can obviously get to the symbology layer by just double clicking on this layer and you can see the symbology tab here as well. But I prefer to have it all in one area so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I want the outside of the map to be transparent. I want no brush strokes i want it to be black completely black um i want the stroke to be a little bit thicker so you can easily see that that is the outside of the map and i'm considering making it a dashed line to show that it's fenced which i quite like all right so we're going to do that 
and we can save that whenever we like. Every time you add something of value to your map, it's always important to save as you go. All right, so the water areas currently are orange or yellow, which is not great. So you can just go to, there are some default settings here to make, say, dams and rivers. So I'm just going to choose a simple blue fill for those. For the roads, um, I would like them to be a sort of simple black line, and I don't see any here that I would like. So I can then just go into the simple fill again and change the color to black. And I'd quite like them to be just a little thicker so you can see it easily. All right, next on the list, I'd like to add in the rivers. I'm going to use a simple blue line like I used for the others. So that gives you a good idea of what the park looks like with my dots on it. But the background is pretty boring, and if you have a look, it's kind of a bit out there. So I'd like to pull in a background from one of the cool open source areas that you can get one. Scroll down nicely in here this XYZ tiles, you can grab OpenStreetMap for our project. So you can see now, it's in a bit of a funky place here, just drag and drop below all the rest of the layers. So you can see nicely that the map lays on top of the OpenStreetMap. You can see where the park ends, you can see the water ends, you can see the power lines, you can see that this is part of the Red Flay Nature Reserve, but I'm not going to be conducting studies there because I'll be eaten by lions. And this is the general look of the map. I think it might be useful to actually project this into something that makes a bit more sense for the African context, and this African lambert is what I tend to use most often. All right, that looks great. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Now, when we look at the map, um, I'm not wild about these random roads on the outside and the rivers coming in, etc. I kind of want all of the stuff that I've made to be inside the bound of the reserve and just to have the open street map on the outside. Also, looking at it now, I'm not wild about the edge of the park being a dotted line because it's not very visible. So let's pull this right up to the top so we can see it. I think red's a bit jarring. I'm going to go for a green outline. That's actually quite nice. I like that. Okay, cool. So as I said, I'm not wild about all these things on the outside, but that's easily remedied by using the vector clipping tool, I believe. So let's start off with the roads, because they are the worst offender. All right, so you're going to go here to our geoprocessing tools, and we're going to clip. We want to clip roads, and the overlay is we want the reserve, and we're going to run that. And we're going to get a clipped layer. All right, this little side here shows us it's a temporary layer. So we want to A, make that a permanent layer. And if I turn off the other roads, you can see that now we have the roads only inside the park. All right, so I'm going to quickly rename this. All right, and I'm going to call it Park Roads. Right, I'm going to pop it into the geo package. I hope that went into the geo package. Yep. Grab it back out. And then I'm going to delete the temporary layer. And we've got a brand new roads layer that is inside the park and that I'm happy with. All right. All the, because we already made symbology for the roads that we liked, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to styles here. I'm going to copy the style of that one that I like, copy the symbology, and all I'm going to do is paste that onto my new roads layer so it looks exactly the same. 
So I'm all in all quite happy with that. I no longer need this layer, so I'm going to boot it out just to keep my area as neat as possible. Same deal for the roads poly, I no longer need that. All these things are still in my geo package, so I can pull them in at any time. So next on the hit list is rivers. I'm going to clip those as well. So geoprocessing tools, clip, going to grab rivers, we're going to clip it by the reserve and we're going to say run. Great stuff. Again, we've ended up with a temporary scratch layer. So we want to make that a permanent layer. So what I'm going to do is just give it a new name. I'm going to call it Park Rivers. Which I'm happy with. I'm gonna drag it down into the geo package. Pull it right back up so that it's now a permanent layer. And what I'm going to do is delete the temporary one. And then because I liked the symbology I used on this layer, I'm just going to do a quick copy and paste of that symbology onto the new layer. And we're good to go. When I switch that off, you can see I only have the rivers inside the park. And so I'm just going to remove this layer. Perfect. So that makes that everything I need is inside the park, except for this random little bit of dam. So I'm going to do the exact same workflow for the dams. So I'm really quite pleased with that. You can see where my points are. You can see where the map is in relation to other things in South Africa and close to Pretoria where the park is. I have a really nice little legend that I can show. I'm going to make a new layout for this map. I'm going to create a layout and call it. I'm going to just check on my page setup. So that's a right click in page properties and it's A4 and landscape, which is exactly what I want. I'm just going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to draw a map frame in and it's going to bring up our map. All right, I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just clicking on the move item content. and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I'd like the map to be larger. So now looking at that, I'm not that happy with the size of the points because they're overlapping in some areas. So I'm actually going to make those a little bit smaller um, and see how that looks. So I'm going to pop back here, um, make the points down to a size one. I think that looks, looks better. Also, the roads, I think, are also a little thick. So I'm going to bring them down just a little. All right, let's see the difference that made. Refresh our map. Cool. So now we have all the points. It's showing the general area, showing the water, um, courses, and all of the roads. So what I'm going to do is put in a quick north arrow just to show our general direction. Alrighty. Okay, I'm not a wild about that arrow because it's a little boring. So let's go for that one. Okay, that is perfect. So as you want to change, you can just come here to the arrows folder and pick out your favorite arrow that there. All right, now I also want to include a legend to tell people exactly what's going on here. So if you go just down to here, this is an add legend tab. 
and we can just pop it right in there. I'm actually going to put it here so it doesn't interfere with any of the roads or things that show exactly where this map is. Perfect. Okay. So I'm quite happy with that, but I don't want this random open street map at the base, so I'm going to say no to auto update and choose that and just get rid of it. That's great. I'm going to pop my legend here at the bottom. I'd like to give the map a frame. Nice large frame. Then I'm going to add in my name. It's good practice just to show who made this map. It's great. So we're going to pop that there. And I think it would be wise to put in our coordinate reference system. So I'm going to put another label at the bottom here. And insert an expression. Um, here you can search for coordinate reference system. Generally it gives you a decent amount of help as to what you need to put in. I'm going to use an expression that I commonly use. So this is the coordinate reference system of the project and because it has some weird spaces in it I've um, corrected for that. Our coordinate reference system for this map. Then let's just throw in a nice title. Cool. I want to center align that, which I'm quite happy with, and I want the font to be slightly larger. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to straighten some things up so that everything lines up correctly. So that our map is easy to read and pleasing for the eye. I'm going to change this, just give it a capital letter. Perfect. And I'm going to center this with the map. So if I just grab both sides and then it will be in the center. Perfect. And I think it might be beneficial for the legend to have a title. I'm just going to call it legend. So you can just click on it and it'll open the item properties. You could also right click on it, but I'm just going to do this. And just straighten that up a little bit. All right, it also might be useful to actually have my grammar correct. So, replay nature reserve data collection points for pom pom wheat. That's perfect. Okay, so we can export this in many different ways. Um, you can see here there's an SVG format, you can go with PDF or export it as an image. I quite like exporting it as an image because it is quite a flexible format. All right, so I want to save it in my replay data file because that's where I've saved absolutely everything else for this project. Save that. I'm just going to use the default um, settings for that and it's going to just export that. Fantastic. So that is now exported as an image. Now the last thing I want to show you is more for practicality sake. So I'm going to go into the field in the next couple of weeks to these points and collect data. But I need the coordinates for the points to enter into my GPS. So in order to get the coordinates, you can see that if I open the attribute table, which is just here, that currently these points that were randomly generated just have an ID number. So what 
I do to find the coordinate points is go into the vector tools. So those are my vector tools and I go into the geometry tools. And from the geometry tools, I go into the add geometry attributes layer. And we can see within this that we want the data collection points and it's we want to use the coordinate reference system of the layer just for now, just for the purposes of this video. And I will run the tool. Fantastic. Then it'll have a added geometry. You can see that that's another temporary layer. You can save it as I previously showed you in the video. But if you open this, you can see the X and Y coordinates that I can then export and use to enter into my GPS to find these points when I'm walking in the field. That's how I used QGIS to make a simple and effective map for my project. I can use it in a presentation at a conference or in a publication. And it only took me around 30 minutes. If you like what you see in this video, check out Cartoza's other social media platforms and their Road to Nerdvana series on YouTube. Thanks for watching.